Hi, I'm Tony, and today we're going to make a pillowcase using the burrito method. Uh, mine is a, just a touch different than a lot of the patterns and videos that you see online, because remember, I like to work with efficiency and speed. So I'm going to show you the easiest, most efficient way that I've discovered doing it, and we're gonna make a super easy pillowcase. The first thing you wanna do is pick your fabrics. So for this example, for our pillowcase, I am gonna be using the Sonic fabric for my main fabric. All of these figures are gonna be down below so you don't have to keep rewinding to be like, what did she say about this measurement? Uh, you need one yard of fabric for your main fabric. You need uh, a third of a yard for your cuff fabric. So that is your offset fabric. In my case, I'm gonna be using red. And then you need a third of a yard for the cuff fabric. You actually only need about a sliver, so we'll get into the specifics a little bit later, but I'm going to be using a blue for this. Uh, now, you do need width of fabric, so you can't unfortunately use a, a fat quarter or things like that, so you have to have a full width of fabric in order to be able to use the fabric. So, let's get started. So, let's cut our fabrics. The main fabric you want to have the width of fabric, so whatever this is, uh, with 27 inches. So I like to use my Martelli cutting mat. As you can see, this is not really straight right here. We always, always want to straighten up our fabrics. So let's get a nice straight line in there. And straighten that baby up. All right, so 27 inches for our main fabric. There we are. So this is going to be the main body of the pillowcase. There we go. Let's set that aside. We want nine inches of our coordinating fabric. So this is going to be the cuff fabric. And in my case, it's the red. And I love to use the measurements on my Martelli mat. It just makes it so much easier. And I've already straightened this one up. So I just need to cut along the nine. There we are. And then, remember I said a sliver of the last fabric, which is the trim, not a second cuff. This is the trim fabric. So in this case, we only need two inches. So two inches. All right, there's one inch, there's two inch. And because it's so small, I can use my ruler. Tony trick for efficiency. This is what I do for my burritos, for my burrito pillowcases. I fold it over. Now, a lot of patterns will say, cut it this length. A lot of them are 40 inches. Well, I'm like, well, what if my fabrics were all like 44 inches? I want a longer pillowcase. So what I do is I line up the folds in all the fabrics that I pick. And this is actually a nice, lovely mix of all the fabrics. This is the Michael Miller Crystal, this is a Moda Marble, and then of course this is the a character fabric. Now in this case, the crystal from Michael Miller is the shortest. So what I'm figuring out over here, in fact, let me move this over so you can see it a little bit better. Over here, you can see where it's actually shorter. So I'm going to take my straight edge and I'm gonna line it up as far as I can to cut off this salvage. And let's line this up at the top to make sure I'm getting a nice straight cut and then moving it as far as I can. So in this case, let's see how long this pillowcase is going to be for this cut. Uh, oh, 42 inches. So I actually got another two inches out of this by doing it that way. So it's a little bit longer and I find it's better, it's faster, it's more efficient and you know everything's gonna line up. Now that we have the body, the cuff and the trim all cut out, the next step is to iron out all these creases. 
So let's iron this. The other thing about the Martelli cutting mat that I like, if you haven't seen my other videos, is you can actually take your ironing pad or wool pad, put it right on top and iron it. The heat is not going to bother it because it has three layers. So it's a lot thicker and can stand a lot more than other, there we go, let's get some steam in there. Beautiful. So it can stand a lot more. All right, so we've got that is ironed. Let's get the cuff fabric ironed out. Okay, and then now the trim. After we iron the trim, we are going to fold it in half, wrong side to wrong side, and then iron it down the center. So folding it in half, wrong side to wrong side, almost like you were doing quilt binding. and folding it in half. Just like that. After everything is ironed, then it is off to do the layout. Now it's time to make the burrito. We want to take the cuff fabric and have it facing up. This is super, super important that this cuff fabric is facing straight up. I have had it facing down before and yeah, that's not good. Now the cuff is not being folded at all. It's just the cuff, just like this. Then we wanna take our trim fabric and line up the raw edge to the raw edge. And there are two trains of thought of what to do at this point. The first one is go ahead and pin this pin it or clip it or do something to keep it together. The second train of thought is to wait and then do it with this. Um, now we have to add our body fabric and the body fabric needs to go face down. You think it would be face up because the cuff is face up, but it's not. It is face down. So at this point you need to decide if you have a directional fabric do, do you want your fabric facing away from the cuff or do you want it facing towards the cuff? So in this case, I think that is facing towards, let's go facing away from the cuff. And whenever we take our burrito out, you'll see what I mean. So we need to line this up as well. Now I am going to start clipping this. We are not quite finished yet. But I find at this point, I need to add my clips. So you can pin it or you can add clips. These are wonder clips. I find that they work out really, really, really well. And they help me to, they help to remind me not to sew over my pins because we do not want to sew over pins. That is not a good habit to have, even though I have that habit. Do as I say, not as I do, don't sew over your pins. When you can, use wonder clips. All right, and I'm gonna move this down, adding pins or clips all the way down. Whoops, oh, look what I did. I always have to double check the back because I don't know what my problem is. I seem to always want to trap things in there. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, wrong side. I find it's easier in this case to have the wonder clips facing the correct direction up. Oh, and it looks like I have a little extra blue on the end for my trim. So I'm just going to trim that just a little bit, just so everything lines up. And Let's trim that one. You get that sometimes whenever you do my method of lining it all up and then cutting it. 
Now it's time to make the burrito. Uh, a lot of other tutorials will just have you fold this down, fold it down, and then do this to make the burrito. I personally find it's a lot easier to roll it. So I start with the end and I roll down. And just roll, 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 roll. And I keep rolling until I get about right there. By rolling it, I, I figure that I actually get more room here. There's not as much bunched in here and it makes it a lot easier for me as I'm sewing it for the next step. So we're going to lay this down. I'm going to pick this up and do that. Now you notice how we're only trapping one side of our main body fabric, but both sides of the cuff. What this does is it puts the entire seam of this cuff inside the pillowcase, inside the actual cuff. So whenever we pull this out, there will be zero raw edges. So you don't have to worry about covering up raw edges or doing anything else. And after we clip this, the next step is to sew it. Now we want to sew this at a quarter inch seam. So I'm using my quarter inch foot with guides. So if the fabric is touching this piece of metal right here, I know I'm sewing a perfect quarter inch. I want to use my scrap fabric for the lead in. And let's take out and be very careful not to shift this fabric. We want to have our fabric touching our needle and then start sewing. As you can see, my fabric is touching that piece of metal right here. So I am sewing a perfect quarter inch seam. So we're sewing this all the way down. One pass should be plenty. You do not have to uh, fix these, the seam in any way. You don't need to, to use your serger. You don't have to use a special stitch. Just a standard straight stitch works fine. If you have problems with sewing a straight line, because that's all this is, is sewing a straight line, make sure you check out my other video of how to sew a straight line. I talk about all the ways, other than this quarter inch foot width guide, that you can use to make sure that the line that you are sewing is straight. All right, and we're almost done. And right when I get to the end, I wanna use my piece of scrap fabric. So I lock in that seam. Ready for the magic? Now it is burrito time. So all you're doing is you're taking this cuff fabric and pulling it down and pulling your body fabric out. And just like that, you have your cuff, you have your accent fabric and then you have your body fabric oh and look i did reverse it so the character fabric is facing our cuff fabric which is what i meant earlier i just said it was facing away but yes no it's facing towards our cuff fabric so the next step is we're going to finish this whole pillowcase off using a french seam uh, if you're not familiar with a French seam, I'll go over it quickly. I do have a video that goes more in depth to a French seam. I will link below if you would like to see all of the sewing steps as well. So I'll just quickly go through the basic steps just as a refresher. First thing you do for a French seam is you want to iron your cuff. So I'm just going to go through and iron this straight down. After ironing, the next step is to sew the pillowcase edges wrong side to wrong side. Yes, you heard me, wrong side to wrong side. Now you notice how this doesn't line up quite nicely right here. I'm just going to trim right along here and then sew along. It is just a straight stitch. We're gonna sew all the way down. When we get to the edge here, I'm going to turn and then sew my straight stitch all the way out. 
After sewing a quarter inch seam, the next step is to trim down to an eighth of an inch. The easy way that I remember is I actually want to trim this in half. This is important for your French seam because if you don't trim this, you're gonna see these edges come through at the next step. After trimming, flip your pillowcase inside out. Once your pillowcase is flipped inside out, you want to iron these seams. So iron the seam along here and iron the seam along here. After ironing, now using a quarter inch seam, we want to sew down again and sew along where we did our initial sewing. Now in the video of the French seam, when I get to the end here of sewing it, I talk about just going up here a little bit and locking it in place before going out. That way, this corner here is stronger and better and you don't have to worry about the stitches coming out. And now, let's flip it. Let's flip it the right way and pop these corners out and we have a pillowcase. See how simple and easy that is? And that's why a pillowcase like this is almost always an easy first project for sewing. So if you have any questions or concerns, don't forget I stream live on Twitch. Feel free to pop in and ask questions if you want me to show you any of these steps again, uh, or if you just wanna show me your pillowcases. I would love to see them. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hopefully you learned something, like making a pillowcase. Uh, don't forget to like this video, follow my YouTube, as well as my other social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget about Twitch. Like I said, if you want any pointers, or if you want to interact with me live, Twitch is the place to do it.